Thank you very much, Professor Sarai, for this introduction. Um, this is the correct. Okay. Um, so yeah, so today <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about RISC-V and CODASIP and how we connect. Um, we're moving from analog design towards purely digital and also to the I interface between software and digital, right? Um, okay, then just briefly, who is the speaker here today? My name is Tadej Murovic. I've also been raised in this halls. I have a master's in electronics and a, and a PhD in embedded AI. And for almost seven years, I've worked as a digital algorithm designer for OnSemi, which is a big American Fortune 500 company. But they, have, they had a design center here in Ljubljana. Um, and we worked on basically dedicated signal processing for both imaging and radar and specifically for the automotive industry. And recently, like 14 months, 15 months ago, I've joined Codasip, which is a Czech-German startup. We have now over 200 people, but you know we're dedicated in developing RISC-V IPs and also tools for developing processors. But this talk is a bit of a two-parter. One's about RISC-V and the second's about our company. And we'll, I'll talk about Codasip about uh, bit more later on, right? And at Codesip, I'm an innovation engineer, basically means doing internal R&D and also facilitating knowledge transfer between academia and the industry as part of our university program. So what is RISC-V? A lot of you might have heard of it. Um, there's a lot of buzz going on about it, but some people don't really know what is it. Is it a processor? Is it some sort of a compiler or, or a or whatever, right? So RISC-V is an ISA. That means an instruction set architecture, meaning. So how do computers basically work? You have a program in C, Python, whatever. You press compile. You translate that text file, basically, into a set of instruction instructions for a certain processor. Those are basically ones and zeros, right? What that processor should do. And those ones and zeros are then put into a memory, and the hardware, the digital part, reads those instructions, knows what to do, and the processors, processor runs, either in your mobile or like laptop or whatever, right? <clears throat> so in between that, right, what are those ones and zeros, right? Those are the instruction set. Basically, each processor, well, not each processor, but there are different kinds of instruction sets, right? ARM, so for your mo mobile phones, might have some. You have the x86, which is used in serv mostly in servers and, and laptops and desktop computers. And there, there's also RISC-V, right? That's just basically a standard on what instructions are to be used. Meaning an addition, bra branch, branching, loads and stores, stuff like that. So what is RISC-V? RISC-V is basically a PDF file that you can Google online that's completely open and it specifies what kind of instructions are to be used by the compiler and the processor. But how the compiler works and how the processor, like the digital part, the hardware works, is, is open, right? Um, and RISC-V was developed 15 years ago, something like that, at Berkeley, uh, based on RISC, the RISC paradigm, which is called, uh, which is the reduced instruction set computing, as opposed to CISC, which is x86, which is used in laptops, which is a com complex instruction set architecture. Basically meaning that it seems through development and you know, in the last decade that using simpler instructions is better than long complex instructions, even though you need to use more instructions, right? The, the, the processor needs to do more stuff because the instructions are simpler, there's less power consumption, um, in, and because it can run faster because of simpler hardware, in the end, it can still be faster. And that's how they started developing this. Um, so why even do that, right? We already have ARM, we have eight, x86, it's everywhere. Why would we want to do something new? Well, basically, because it is open, it fosters um, uh, innovation and collaboration between different industry firms and companies and academia. There is no vendor lock-in, so to say, because nowadays there's a monopoly slash duopoly between ARM, like all your mobile phones, Snapdragon, it's all based on ARM. 
desktop that says servers all based on x86 from Intel. Um, and if you want, everything's done in that. If you want to use those kind of processors, software, software built for those processors, you have to basically marry that company. And they can charge you whatever. While RISC-V, because it's open, we, there are special interest groups going on. Any, like any company, any academic institution can be part of it, can decide and like steer the development of how, the, how RISC-V is developed, how the ISA is developed. And uh, like RISC-V also is based basically on Lego block, block philosophy. We have the base instruction set, and then you have different extensions that were developed communally, basically, right? Maybe for cryptography, as Mr. Bresco was talking about, or vectors for AI, signal processing, uh, safety extensions, and stuff like that. So there's, there's, there's no one company that's deciding what to do, how everything will be done, but it's a communal thing, and that enables, and because it's open, it enables you know, innovation and, and better ideas. Um, yeah, so that's just, okay. Yeah, I've been told the, the laser pointer is a bit, bit funky, but okay, yeah. So you can see, I've, I've cut off the, the, the screenshot, but there's basically everybody that exists in digital design and, and beyond is part of some sort of RISC-V movement, right? Because RISC-V has gained such a momentum in the past years because of all the reasons I, I've, I've mentioned. Uh, everybody wants a piece of the pie, wants to um, contribute to it, and, and so you, you can see like Samsung, Google, Qualcomm, huge NXP, huge companies, everybody's working with, with RISC-V because it seems that you know, in 10 years, RISC-V will start to dominate the markets uh, because it en enables such openness, especially as I mentioned, right? It's just an ISA, a PDF file, so anybody you know, new companies can come along. Oh, we have a new idea for digi for a hardware processor, superscaler, whatever. Ah, okay, we already have RISC-V defined. We'll have our own thing on the hardware side, or maybe there's a new company that's doing compiler work, has new ideas, new algorithms, and they can still say, oh, we'll work on RISC-V, but we'll, we have our own idea for the compiler side, but it's all, all interconnected in, and it can work, right? Um, so everybody wants a piece of, of the pie. Um, uh, so these are some, pro some projections, right, uh, on how RISC-V will basically take off in all different spheres like GPUs as well, DSP, AI acceleration, that's a big thing nowadays, um, security, right, everything. I think that this, this graph is a bit old already, right, this was the cons conservative um, estimation, we, like RISC-V business has already uh, overtook that. Um, so now the, now the second part of my talk, which is where I'm from. So who is Codesip? Who are we, right? right? As, as I mentioned, it's a Czech-German startup. We began like about 10 years ago in Brno, in the Czech Republic. And basically it came along from a, P, from a PhD the study from our fo founder, right? And they wanted to automate um, CPU design, right? And, and what CodeSIP is nowadays like offering, there are two parts, right? One is IP, um, pro, uh, we are an IP provider, so risk five specifically IP provider, IP meaning we create a digital design in Verilog or VHDL, I know you all know it, so hardware description language, and that's, that's the architecture and this is what is being sold. And the other part is CodeSIP Studio, which is a tool where you can use a C-like language, so very high level uh, way of developing CPUs. Not necessarily RISC-V, but because of all of the things I mentioned about RISC-V, we kind of fit in with RISC-V really neatly. Because if there's a new, new, new extension for RISC-V, our studio can implement it. Um, and also we enable customization, which RISC-V is also very like, enabling of. Um, we kind of wanted to, to bring pro processor optimization into the loop of hardware and software optimization, right? Because usually how, we, you know, you'd have a digital design, you would tweak your dedicated stuff, you have your own software, you wrote the software, but then for the processor, you kind of have to buy something from some, somebody, right? While with Studio, basically our tool 
you define the processor, how it looks, how the hardware looks. You have cycle accurate simulations of it, right? How many stages, what exactly is going on in, in there. You press a button, on one side you get the compiler for the CPU you just created. Maybe it's not necessarily risk five, right? You might add some special trinogometry, um, AI acceleration, stuff like that, right? You get the compiler for it, press another button. On the other hand, you get the HDL file basically for the CPU. And you can easily integrate it in your, your Spice, no, not Spice, but Vivado or ASICs simulators and see, and see you know, what the, the PPA, so power, perfor performance power and area um, uh, is of your CPU. If you don't like it, you can go back, reiterate, right? Uh, you can recompile your code with, with what you just did, how you change your, your hardware. You can iterate really quickly and efficiently to get to the best thing that you want to actually produce in the end. Uh, so maybe just a bit more high level stuff. Where, where are we? Where is Codesip, right? We're based in the EU. Our design centers are here in the EU. As I said, it, we started in the Czech Republic, but we have design centers in France, Spain, Germany, the United Kingdom. We have sales representatives all over the world. Um, Slovenia is not mentioned here. I'm the only one here working remotely, but we're always looking for new people. Um, uh, so yeah, and more specifically, right, as I mentioned, um, an innovation engineer, part of our, we call it labs, we're the R&D central of our company. So we're thinking about what processors are needing right now and will need in the future, trying to research that prototype, do demos, which can then be brought to our actual development team, teams to integrate into, into our IPs, right? Um, and those are all of the things we're working on, right? So functional safety security, as we've heard at the talk before, AI acceleration, graphics, uh, in-memory processing, that's also a big thing nowadays, um, or also not in-memory in and near-memory processing, uh, low-power solutions, right? Um, and also towards more high-performance stuff, like out-of-order architectures for computers, uh, so basically server racks and thing, things that are being done in the cloud. Um, and maybe an interesting thing is we also have a university program where we work with academic institutions and universities where we offer our tools and IPs for free so that we foster knowledge transfer and you know, people get to learn through tools that are being used in the industry while we are you know, first in line to any new ideas that might come from academia that we can bring into industry relatively quickly. Um, yeah. That's basically, that's also my business card, if anyone wants to talk. Thank you. Um, any questions? Thank you. Maybe just a comment. Uh, I, I, I mean, Risk Five is not just ISA. And the ISA is uh, not enough uh, to, to, to make it successful. The reason is because compiler is easy to do, uh, relatively. I mean, uh, comparing to porting all the software. Um, so the point is that there's architectural de definition of the registers um, so that you have ported operating systems and so on. And th this is the big part. So the, the ISA you can change and you change the compiler and you're done. If you're changing the architectural definition of the processor registers and so on, then you can't just do compiler, but you need to go and edit assembly files, for example, of your operating systems. Just um, a comment there. Yeah, the the yeah, RISC V definitely also has the the yeah the register file is defined in the PDFs I mentioned, right? Um, uh, but yeah, basically yes. You are right, but I wouldn't agree that the compiler is the easy, the, the easy part in doing, especially once we get to the VLIW and out of water machines where um, things might and do get complicated. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? If not, thank you. <laughs>